This is the uh, overview of a AFB 506 with its features. Um, we're going to go through the instrumentation um, on the control panel and uh, around with the other features uh, around the machine. Uh, as you're looking at the control panel, the, uh, you've got this upper left bank up here is uh, basically all your uh, warning lights, uh, filter lights, um, engine codes, things like that. Runs, if any one of these comes on, then it tells you that either a fuse is blown uh, or there's an issue with it. As we come across over here, we have your engine display meter. This has uh, engine oil temperature, hydraulic temperature, RPMs, and it also has your footage in and out per drum. Keeps track of that. To reset your footage in and out, use these two buttons right here, drum one, drum two. That would reset your footage. These right here, this is this is the main component of your control panel. This is what this is your vision as to what's going on. What you have here is a dynamometer uh, with a three-scale bezel mounted over the top, and obviously these are calibrated. The what you do then is you use your black needle and you position that on the scale of what you're doing. If you're if your intention low, which is for anything, you know, light work, uh, fiber, uh, shield wire, things like that, you probably want to go into the low range. Also possibly tensioning in a hard line, you need to be in your low range. If you're in your low range, then these, this light would come on. That would tell you that you're in your low range. If you are in your low range, then you use this inside scale. This is all pounds times 100. So really this owns the max uh, tension that your uh, in your low range can go is right around 2,500 pounds. If you're not in your low range and you're tensioning, you use the center scale. If you're pulling, then you need to use your outside scale. And again, all times 100 on, on the pounds per pull. So that's how that works, that's how that scale is set up on both of these. These numbers inside here, inside this gauge, are really just for a reference. Coming down the control panel over here, we have your uh, front plow up and down. Obviously the ignition switch and uh, your RPMs up and down. Coming across over here, these two gauges. These two gauges are your uh, main pump pressures. And those need to stay right, right around 320. PSI. These two switches right here, this is for machine connection capability. Uh, these machines have the uh, capacity to be connected together as a polar situation to pull in simultaneous either phases or hard lines, um, whatever. And then uh, what you would do then is you would have one uh, control machine and then the uh, Machines on down the line would just be um, dummy machines, and they would do exactly what you're telling the main machine to do. Um, so the machines down, so down stroke, you would have this light on and this light on to synchronize them all. But as if you're not connecting machines, then you don't use these. These two switches right here control your front uh, drum brakes. Um, you use those for uh, double socket. Um, or switching out maybe a hard line. Um, right down here we have the emergency stop button. Obviously if there's life or limb involved, you need an emergency stop, hit that, shuts the machine off. As we come across over here, these two switches here are your uh, negative brake end gauge. Now, these two switches are for pole setting Pre-setting your tension and pull uh, before you actually get into a pull, uh, and those can be when you stop a pull. Uh, you know, you use your joystick to start, start, and stop. You don't use those switches to start and stop. Those are for pre-setting only. If you come down here, you've got two separate gauges for your outlets, your auxiliary outlets for your reel stands. Um, you know, one and two, uh, vice. 
pipe or whatever, whichever ones you're using in the back. It's got two separate circuits for that, two different pumps. You control your real stand pressure right here. This controls your fan pressure. This is the fan for your uh, uh, hydraulic uh, cooling fan. This would be, you need this on to run the front plow, runs off the same pump. Usually it's just a good idea to keep this on at right around 75 bar, 50 to 75 bar. As we're coming across over here, we've got two different potentiometers. And when these are for, these are actually with presetting your pressure. This is what moves your black needle up and down. Right is up, left is back down. Once you lock those in, you use those to control your black needle up and down for presetting. This switch right here, you can combine drums if you wish. Uh, it then takes this machine and it all operates off of here. So as soon as you switch this on, then your machine, both drums are going to be working the same. And then you control those drums off your number two circuit. That would be for a pulling situation uh, over 7,500 pounds. This switch is a synchronizer for the drums. Uh, this would be for um, if you wanted to keep the drums separate but the same speed, you can use that to uh, break the, the two drums together. This here is your joysticks. Obviously, joystick up, drums go out, joystick down, drums recover. And then we always have to remember that the only situations where you're using the layout mode is to lean into uh, a grip at the breakover or, and or uh, loading the drums, reaving the drums. Um, you know, in your tension mode, you're always like this, going to stick down, and then you're presetting your tension. some of the features on the machine uh, outside the control panel. Uh, what we have here is a manual greaser and uh, what that does is uh, grease up in between the, uh, the main drive gear and the bowl wheel. Uh, this is something that you do every 20 minutes uh, per running time. Moving to the front of the machine, we've got the front drum brakes which I mentioned over when we were talking about the panel. Uh, what this allows you to do is this allows you with these soft uh, rubber pads here, you can, you can pin the wire and or hard line against the drum and it allows you to do some double socking or if you need to do any work uh, around and in and around the machine, you can put that on as a safety and or for a double socking kind of machine. Um, obviously they're labeled one and two, just like how they're labeled uh, over there on the control panel. And as we move to the front of the machine, this is our front plow. Um, and as you would set that up um, for operation, you would make sure that you level your machine off as much as possible. And then you use that front plow to go up and down with it to get it level. As was mentioned earlier, uh, this machine has the capability of a, a two separate gear system, which allows you to uh, do some lower tensioning and also uh, up into the higher ranges of what the machine capability is. Uh, what you have on the gear box is you have a three position uh, lever. You have uh, all the way forward, which is your normal range, which is your high power range. Uh, you have the center position, which is a neutral, and then that fine range, which is, uh, which is for your shield wire and your fiber optics. Uh, what you do is you, you first of all take off all the pressure on the bow wheels, but you pull this knob out and move this joystick back into the low range, uh, but then you'll be looking off that inside scale on your bezel. Um, and what that allows you to do is it, it just broadens the range of what the machine capability is. And as for you know, all the other functions of the machine, please reference your owner's manual. Um, that has all of your uh, guides to uh, setup, anchoring, all the other functions of the machine. Again, this is an overview of the control panel and functions of the machine.